This is Math 98. We're looking at section 10.1, and we're going to start solving uh, different types of quadratics. And the first thing we're going to start using is just square roots. So if I think about uh, x squared equals 9, there's kind of two ways I could go about solving this. Uh, one is get it equal to 0, subtract 9 from both sides. And then we know this is the difference of two squares, so we could factor this to x plus 3 times x minus 3. And then these two things multiplied to give me 0, so x would equal negative 3 or 3. Now another way I can do this one is, uh, well, let's think about it. What squared gives me 9? 3 and negative 3, right? So we can use square root. So in other words, what we can do is we have this equation, and let's square root both sides. Now what I want you to notice is we are bringing the square root into this equation. Like, it is our doing. So when we bring it in to undo a square, we want to remember that squares uh, mask negatives. So we bring in a plus or minus with it. This is the biggest mistake I see people make when they're doing this type of problem is forgetting the plus or minus here. Square root of x is x, really the absolute value of x. But since we brought in the plus minus, we're good. Plus or minus square root of 9, which is 3. So, our, so that's literally plus or minus. So we could say we have a plus case or we have a minus case. So x is negative 3 or 3. Do some more like this. If I had something that said x squared equals 5, well, I'm going to go the same route. I'm going to square root both sides. Remember, when you bring in a square root, a plus or minus comes with it. Uh, square root of 5, that's reduced. I'm looking for exact answers, so I'm not going to grab my calculator. I'm just going to leave it as square root of 5. Square root of x squared is absolute value of x, but we have the plus or minus that takes care of it. So this is, I can write my answer plus or minus 5. That shows that I have both of them. If you want to write it out as negative root 5 and positive root 5, that is okay as well. So we're going to build on this idea by starting to solve some stuff. So I have y squared minus 72 equals 0. I don't have difference of squares. So how about I get the y squared all alone and then square root? So I'm going to add 72 to both sides. Uh, now square root both sides. Remember, plus or minus comes in with it. So I get y equals square root of 72. 72 is 36 times 2. Square root of 36 is 6, square root of 2 is 2, so I'll say my answers are plus or minus 6, the square root of 36, root 2. These are easy to check. Take that number, plug it back in here in your calculator, right? Like if you're not sure if you're right, I'm going to say, um, well, I've got 6, ooh, that isn't right because it should be a 2. <laughs> Okay, so now I'm going to check and see if my answer is actually right. So 6 square root of 2. Notice I put that whole thing in parentheses because I'm going to square it. And then I'm going to subtract 72 from that. And it should give me a 0. Yeah, I know that I'm right. There's that one. Let's do this one now. Same idea. Let's add 75 to both sides. Now I'm going to square root both sides. Remember, plus or minus comes into it when I bring in the square root to undo a squared. So a equals plus or minus 75. I can reduce that a little bit. That's 25 times 3. Square root of 25 is 5. Let's see if I write this one right. Square root of 3. Yep. Again, plug it back in if, uh, if you're not sure if it works. It's always a good idea to plug it back in and check it. Just, just make sure that you're, you're good. It's easy easy check when you've got a calculator. Let's move that over. Same idea. Let's subtract 16 from both sides. Square root both sides, plus or minus comes in with it when you square root. And, ah, oh, I'm trying to square root a negative. So right now I can say no real solution. I want to emphasize there are solutions, they are imaginary. We just haven't talked about imaginary numbers yet. Do a couple more of these. So I'm not going to square root both sides just quite yet here. I want to get the m squared all alone, and then I'll square root. So how about I divide both sides by 5, right? Because I got 5 times something equals 80. So that something must be whatever 80 divided by 5 is. That feels like something I should know, but uh, I'm going to say probably 16. 
and now square root both sides. When I square root both sides, plus or minus comes in with it. I'm going to keep saying that, so uh, just it's a little song in your head. Uh, M equals plus or minus 4. Cool. Let's solve this one. So before I can square root, I want to get this thing that's squared all alone, right? B is squared here. So let's subtract 5 from both sides. And now this is 2 thirds. Let's multiply both sides by 3 halves. So notice if here on the left, this becomes 6 6, which is 1, giving me a B squared. Over here, half of 12 is 6. 6 times 3 is 18. So now I have b squared equals 18. I'm going to square root both sides. And I don't know if you know this, but a plus or minus is going to come with it because I brought it into the problem and squaring masks negatives. And let's see, 18, I can break that up. That's 9 times 2. So b is plus or minus. Square root of 9 is 3. Square root of 2 is 2. Plus or minus 3 root 2. Notice there's two answers here, right? One of them being negative 3 root 2, the other being positive 3 root 2. So this one um, is in this form, which is convenient. Something squared is 25. You know, it's tempting maybe to multiply this out, try and do that, but let's just get rid of that square. That square is the furthest thing out. So let's square root both sides. So I'm going to square root this side. I'm going to square root this side. I'm going to remember bringing my plus or minus with it. So the square root of something squared is just the thing. So the square root and the squared undo each other, leaving me an x plus 4 over here on the left. And then I have plus or minus the square root of 25 is 5. Let's keep working to solve x. Subtract 4 from both sides. So I've got two cases. I can keep going from here. I can resolve this a little bit more. I've got negative 4. It's plus or minus. So negative 4 plus 5 or negative 4 minus 5. So my answers would be negative 4 plus 5 is 1. Negative 4 minus 5 is negative 9. And again, if I'm not sure about them, plug them back in, show that they work. All right, same sort of idea here with this one. Let's uh, square root both sides since I've got that square out there. Plus or minus comes with it. I have a, a plus 2, not squared. I already undid the squaring. Equals 12 is 4 times 3. So this would be plus or minus square root of 4 is 2. Square root of 3 is square root of 3. So I've got plus or minus 2 root 3. Still working to get a all alone. a plus 2, so let's subtract 2 from both sides. And I know I can't combine these because they're not like terms. So I'm going to write this as negative 2 plus or minus 2 root 3. And this is a compact answer, right? There's two, there's two answers here, one of them being negative 2 minus 2 root 3, and the other being negative 2 plus 2 root 3. And there they both are. Notice my square isn't all the way alone here. So I want to get it all alone so I can square root. So I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides first. And then now I have c minus 3 squared equals 25. Now that I have the square all alone, right, there's stuff in it, but it's the furthest thing out. How about I square root both sides to undo that? Uh, when you square root, when you bring it in, a plus or minus comes with it when you bring it into the problem. C minus 3 equals plus or minus 5. Add 3 to both sides. 3 plus or minus 5. 3 plus 5 is 8. 3 minus 5 is negative 2. There's my answers. If you don't like them, plug them back in and check them. Make sure that they work, because they do. All right, uh, I'm going to do now a form that's going to be a little bit, a little funny, actually. And it, it's nice to recognize this form if you can. Very specific thing going on here. Um, I can't, like, since I have a D in two spots, trying to get the square all alone and then uh, square rooting, I end up square rooting D. And it's not going to work for me. But if I notice, this left-hand side, this is 5 squared. Uh, this is negative 5 squared. And this is 2 times negative 5. Those numbers, that means I have a perfect square trinomial on the left, which means I could rewrite this as d minus 5, that whole thing squared, equals 18. And now it's in the form that I was solving before. Now I can say, fine, I'll square root both sides. Plus or minus comes in when I square root both sides, when I bring in the square root. 
Over here, I've got D minus five. Uh, sorry. Plus or minus, this is nine times two. So root three, two. Wrong. Three root two. Add five to both sides. And D equals five plus or minus three root two. Again, that's two answers, five plus three root two and five minus three root two. So in this chapter, try to recognize this as a perfect square. Uh, so for example, like in this problem right here, this is a perfect square. This is, this is 3a squared. This is 2 squared. This is, uh, let's think of it as negative 2 squared, because this is 2 times negative 2 times 3. That gives me the negative 12. So this, I could rewrite as this. Square root both sides. You're on your way. All right. Uh, what, uh, actually, I'm going to finish this one. There's no all right here. Not yet. Let's square root both sides. Plus or minus comes with it. Uh, square root of 25 is 5. So I got plus or minus 5. Let's keep solving for a. So add 2 to both sides. So I got 3a equals 2 plus or minus 5. At this point, if you want to like write this as two different numbers, you know, and solve them both, like from here you could say 3a equals 2 minus 5 is negative 3, but it also equals 2 minus 5 is 7. And then divide everything by 3 to get uh, negative 3 over 3, 7 thirds, which is negative 1 and 7 thirds. You can do it that way. Uh, you could also leave it stacked as the plus or minus and resolve it at the end. In other words, you could divide both sides by 3 here now and write this as a equals. 2 plus or minus 5 over 3, and now do the plus or minus part, right? Like 2 minus 5 is negative 3, 2 plus 5, 7, and of course you get the same answers. But you can resolve this now, or you can resolve it later. I tend to carry it to the end. All right, for real this time, that's it. Uh, post any questions that you have or message me as you give the problem set from this chapter a good go.